So welcome friends. Uh, today we are in conversation with Professor Harry Hosler, Chief Executive Officer of TBHIV Care in South Africa. He is uh, with me at uh, the TBHIV Symposium at 10th IES Conference on HIV Science or IES 2019. Uh, and he just finished a very powerful talk on uh, talking about ethics and human rights in context of latent TB and TB and AIDS. So uh, Professor Harry Hosler, please share with all the people who are not here, particularly at this conference, what you just uh, spoke and uh, motivated and stimulated all of us. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, my name is Harry Hausler. I'm the CEO of TBHIV Care, which is an organization that works in South Africa to try and prevent TB and uh, screen for TB and increase access to TB and HIV uh, care uh, in South Africa in the general population and amongst key populations. And um, we, we particularly work with inmates in correctional services, sex workers, people, and people who inject drugs as uh, some key populations in South Africa. Uh, what I was really emphasizing today in my talk was the importance of medical ethics and the principles of medical ethics when one considers new interventions and particularly TB preventive therapy. And TB preventive therapy has been around for a long time, but its rollout has been suboptimal. South Africa is the country that has the, the biggest implementation of TB preventive therapy as well as of antiretroviral treatment in the, ro in the world. There are um, more than 400,000 people on TB preventive therapy um, who were initiated last year. Uh, but that's still only 53% of uh, people who are newly enrolled in HIV care. And we have another 4.4 million South Africans who are already on antiretroviral treatment. And uh, we don't really have the data to say what proportion of them have had access to TB preventive therapy. So we really do have a long way to go. When you think about the, the principles of uh, medical ethics, there are four main principles. Beneficence, which means do what works. Non-maleficence is do no harm. Autonomy, allow people to choose. And then justice, which is very much linked to access. So from the point of view of of beneficence, we know that TB preventive therapy works very well. And six months of INH, as well as the new uh, regimens that are being, uh, that are in the new WHO guidelines, three months of weekly rifapentine and INH works well, as well as three months of rifampicin and INH. So there are different treatment options. Non-maleficence is to do no harm, and in fact, 3-HP has less hepatotoxicity, it's less um, toxic to the liver. Uh, has, it's safer and has better adherence than six months of isoniazid, but both are, are very safe. In terms of autonomy, we really should be giving people the choice to, to, to access the regimen that they want. So justice comes in, because rifapentine currently is just not affordable at its current price. We need to put pressure on the pharmaceutical companies that produce it, including Sanofi, to bring down the price so that it becomes affordable and it can be implemented more widely in high burden countries like South Africa. So the advocacy issues are really that people living with HIV should have access to TB preventive therapy and early antiretroviral treatment at the same time. We really need to get the price of rifapentine down so that it can be one of the regimens that's available to people. And so we need updated guidelines that include it as an option. We also really need to improve the treatment literacy for people living with HIV and also household contacts who are eligible for TB preventive therapy because that way we can increase demand for TPT. Then we have to have a strong monitoring and evaluation framework because if it's not measured, it's not con considered important and it's not done. And lastly, we do need a very strong multi-sectoral accountability framework so that we can hold all governments and civil society and private sector partners accountable to reach our ambitious TB preventive therapy targets. Thanks very much.
Thank you so much, Professor.